So we're here with uh, members of Landline Marathon. Would you like to introduce yourselves for clarity's sake? Um, I'm Matt. Grace. Dylan. Ryan. And uh, we were kind of talking about this earlier before you guys, you three guys came down, but we we're just wondering for uh, for a band who's from Phoenix, warm warm climates and uh, hot <laughs> weather. I mean, do you? First of all, have you ever experienced weather like? I mean, it's not that in the same way that bands who are from this area want to sort of tour down in the south in the winter time. I definitely don't like the cold in any way, shape, or form. And if it below, goes below 70. Well, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, not obviously Celsius, but um, I start complaining. <laughs> so that's about that's my opinion on cold. I'm embracing the change of pace. Oh, I'm pretty uncomfortable. I like I like uh, Phoenix winters. Like it's it's like this, but 20 degrees Fahrenheit warmer. So. <laughs> yeah, this is this is pretty intense uh, for for me. It's, it's definitely some of the coldest weather I've been in, and we're not even in the yeah, real cold. cold so yeah. yeah, we're kind of wimps. <laughs> My, All right, dad, my, my dad lives in way colder weather, so like I try not to be a wuss when I get like this because I know he's in like 60 below, and like <laughs> this is I I don't know what this is probably 40 Fahrenheit. So, yeah, about, yeah, it's yeah. about 40. Try not to yeah. be a wuss. <laughs> so where where did this tour start? Where have you been, and where are you going? And how is it going to be going? Well, we we met up with Skeleton Witch. Uh, in Columbus, Ohio, but we, we made our way out on our own, you know, through um, Santa, Fe. Through, through Santa Fe and uh, St. Louis, just kind of made the long drive. Uh, so yeah, we met up with them in Ohio. and It ends in Austin on, I believe, the 4th, and we are going to make our way home and just play, like, I think, like, three or four shows coming home, but yeah, it's been going really, really well so far, except for crossing the border that's left out. <laughs> Tell us about crossing the border and why, it why it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first day, Skeleton Witch couldn't get in because of paperwork or whatever. And then, so we decided to stay back with Skeleton Witch. Uh, Withered got through, ended up playing the show that we were supposed to play. And then the next day, we went to the border and it took three hours and a lot of bad attitude from the border patrol or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> Um, for us to get through, so they actually like made me cry, kind of. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Yeah, I um, I have a DUI that was expunged from when I was 19, and the lady, it, when you get something expunged, it's not on your record anymore, but it still came up under the Canadian like whatever they do, and the lady was like, you know, we take those so seriously here, and I was like, I was 19, I'm really sorry. Like she's like, we'll see. <laughs> to be fair to the Border Patrol, though, she cries at, like, Humane Society commercials and stuff. <laughs> I've shown her a cute dog, and she just started crying. That's true. <laughs> true I do. So, so, I guess it's not that hard to make me cry. But, but it worked. Yeah, we got to say a big props to Scott from Skeleton Witch. Because oh, yeah. He, yeah, all, he took charge of the border and, and made them get us through just by determination. Yeah. Just back and forth on the phone all day, so. Oh, yeah. We got through, so. They've been nothing but good to us, so. Uh, yeah. Big props. So was this tour set up, um, and being all prosthetic bands, was it set up that way, or no. just by total coincidence? <laughs> um, well, it was, it was, Skeleton, Skeleton Witch was playing the tour. EJ uh, offered it to us, got us secured on it. Then they were trying to find more bands. They asked Withered, but Withered was doing the Danzig tour, but they, they met up with us last night. Um, okay. So they and they drove from LA to uh, Windsor <laughs> in one one drive and uh, met up with us there. And, but yeah, they they got added a little later on, and it just kind of turned out that it was all prosthetic bands, but prosthetics fully behind it. Right. Now, I'm still with both the bands. They're awesome. They're awesome guys. It's fun to with tours. Have you guys toured with the band separately before? No, we played with the bands before, but like just on like Phoenix shows or random shows. South but by Southwest. Southwest. Right. Yeah, right. and uh, but we know I've never either one. So with them doing like something like a Danzig tour, I don't know. I'm not really sure if you guys have done 
an opening slot for a bigger tour like that? Have you? Or this is no? this is really yeah. our first. Yeah. This is our this is our first like package tour because usually we just go out on our own or do like we've done a lot of like. DIY style tours, right. like we did one with the Black Earth last year, you know, hook up with other bands that were friends with them, have, you know, booked it ourselves or had our agent do it, and it, it was, you know, this tour is really laid back, but all our other tours have been even more laid back. You wouldn't find a day sheet on our other tours. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting that push or that pressure from Prosthetic to start? Um, Stepping up, so to speak, to possibly getting on bigger no. tours. Or, I mean, I mean or they, they want us to, obviously. But when we signed, we kind of made it clear to them that we had some uh, few things holding us back, like mainly financially, to uh, for us to tour too much. And uh, but we're kind of working into touring actually more than we told them we were going to originally. So, which we're really stoked on. Uh, so they're not, they're not really push. I'm sure they would love it if we, if we toured all year, but. So, um, what's, uh, what, what awaits you guys once you get home? I mean, other, I mean, other than like the holidays and Christmas, I mean, <laughs> like what do you guys do outside of this and how do you make it all work? Uh, all of us have other jobs that we go home to. Uh, Thankfully, um, I'm done with school, so that was kind of like a all something that held me back personally for a long time. But I, I graduated last year, so it's really it's really nice because um, we've just been been like slowly but surely making it easier and easier for us to tour, um, and maybe it'll be even better next year when we come home. I know we're gonna do some writing and stuff. We almost definitely. Yeah, we all we all work. I make records, they make t-shirts, Grace <laughs> makes, <Just> hangs out. <laughs> Grace hands out Thanks food Thomas. to people. <laughs> we, we all love music, we all I mean, we play on the side as much as we can, just trying to get away from the daily grind, you know, none of us really like our jobs, Brian does, because he makes He's the only one. <laughs> I, get, I get to, you know, hang out with Exude and record him. That's, yeah, that's better than printing t-shirts all day, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> Were you actually just doing that? Yeah, uh, I was making that record frantically before we left on tour. So, um, and then I did another album right after that. So, oh really? It was. I I did like I don't know like thirty days straight with one day off in between where we actually flew to Austin and played a show. That was my one day off. I flew back that night. Was that, that for that no fun 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 the fun 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 yeah. It was awesome. Got to play with Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, what about the the limited edition cassette box set? Awesome. How did how did that come to be? Uh, Amy from Votsek actually approached us because she has a label called Self Sustained Recordings, and uh, she just t- like texted us or wrote us or something and was like, "I want to release all of your records on cassette. What do you think about that?" And I was like. Well, is this gonna be like crappy Maxwell, like <laughs> you know, yeah. cassettes? And she's like, no, fully. Like this will look like an old relapse cassette release. And we're like, well, as long as you're willing to license it from Prosthetic, we're 100% down. And she was totally into it. So she's a friend really of all of cool. ours. We're really glad to have you know, her doing it. Yeah. And that's limited edition to 100. It's supposed to be 200 of each album, but the box sets are limited to 100. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, 200. Do you get looks on the road from kids that oh, are yeah. like, what every, the hell is this? Every <laughs> single time I go, they're like, oh, fucking rad. Like, My parents be, used to play these. You know. <laughs> but you know what? She, every night she's been saying, we've got brand new cassette tapes out of all our albums, and people, people cheer. Them. Yeah, yeah. People cheer, so, and they buy them. But you, you know, give them another option. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't have money, most people don't, so yeah. 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 On the flip side, the label does have distribution to South America and places in Asia where cassettes are still the, the primary media. So that, that definitely helps on that level, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How much do uh, Like 25 seconds. 25 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for doing it, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys back here soon. Awesome.